In this video, I will demonstrate end-to-end -end internal tank analysis. So here, I have a set of unregistered data sets of an internally scanned tank. Prior to this, I used the import points functionality to convert the raw scans into Unitank's internal data format. For more information about this, please see our importing data video to learn how to bring data into the Unitank environment. First off, we are going to color the layers to random colors so that we can differentiate them from each other. We can have a look at the, our data by moving around using the left mouse button or rotating using the right mouse button. You can also quickly switch between top view and side view by hitting T for top or S for side on the keyboard. We can limit the data we see on the screen by constraining the elevations that are shown. Using the constrain Z function, we can view only a thin horizontal slice of data so that we isolate certain sections of the tank. Using the page up and page down keys, we can quickly move these limits up and down. Next, we are going to estimate the diameter of the tank. If you already know the diameter of the tank, you can skip this step. I'm going to use the circle tool to trace the shell in one of the scan layers. Using my page up and page down keys, I'm going to search for a transect of the tank where I only see the shell, not the floor, the roof, or the floating roof. Holding down the shift key, I can create a circle drawing by clicking two sides of the circle. I'm going to use the Find Circle tool to fit the circle I have drawn to the data. This will give me a very accurate measurement of the tank's diameter. You can use the Circle Find tool to not only estimate shell diameters, but also column diameters and areas. Using the layer control here, you can also select whether you use data from all layers or just a single layer. All these controls within this area apply only to the layer that is selected. Since our data is not yet registered, we only want to use the layer that we used to trace our circle. Now that we know the diameter of the tank, we can perform course registration. This process will roughly align all the scans. Now, we want to refine the registration. First, we want to automatically add fiducials. Fiducials are areas where we look for common surfaces or columns between the scans so that we can tie them together. You can manually add fiducials as well using the define fiducials function. The surface fiducials on the shell control horizontal translation. The surface fiducials on the floor control vertical translation. Finally, the column fiducials at each column control z-axis rotation. We will discuss the topic of fine registration in more detail in subsequent videos. Once we are satisfied with our fiducials, we can run snap fiducials. What this does is it finds the best fit model by positioning each scan layer so that the surfaces and columns are as close as possible. If you get a warning that snap fiducials did not converge on the first try, just run snap fiducials again. However, if you find that it consistently does not converge, run the check fiducials tool. Look to see if there are fiducials with high error. If so, remove these and try running snap fiducials again.
Now we have a registered model, we want to ensure that any manipulation we do after this, we do to the whole model as a whole. So we are going to set the type to all to ensure all manipulations are applied to all point clouds and definitions together. At this point, we want to orient our model to a specific reference point. Typically, we use the bottom to shell weld at the north man wing. To do this, we simply need to add a point using the point tool near the bottom at the north man wing. We can then use the find plane tool to fit this point to the bottom. Lastly, we use point to reference, which performs two operations. First, it rotates the model horizontally so that the manway is positioned to the north. Then, it moves the model vertically so that the bottom at this location is at zero. So we just have one more step to do before we do the analysis. We need to classify each point either as shell, bottom, roof, column, beam, or other. We need to define the top and the bottom of the shell, and Unitank will figure out the rest. We want to use the Find Circle tool to trace the shell. Like we did previously when using the Find Circle tool, we want to select a transect where we only see shell and no bottom, floating roof, or roof data. We will set the bottom of the shell at zero. Now we can estimate the top of the shell visually. Here we can see it's at about 32 feet. We will set the top of the shell at 32 feet. We will run auto classify using the default settings. Since we don't have a floating roof in this tank, we will uncheck that option. Unitank has now classified all the points into their appropriate classes. We just want to double check a few classes to make sure there's nothing missing. You can visually inspect each of the individual classes by isolating the points that pertain to each class individually. We go into greater detail on data cleanup and reclassification on subsequent videos. The main check that we want to do is to ensure we don't have any shell or bottom data in the others class. If we do, we can simply draw a polygon around the data and reclass it to its appropriate classification. When we are satisfied with the classification, we can now move on to analysis. All the tank analysis tools are located in this tab. Before you start any analysis, you must first define the tank properties. In most cases, you can leave the default parameters as they are when running each tool. All the plots are written to the output file location. In the output folder, you will find many more outputs such as cross sections and data files. Once all the analysis tools have been run, a report can be generated automatically. 
You can customize the format of the report by modifying the template located in Unitank's install directory. Review the report and remove any sections that do not apply to your tank. The last step is to update all the smart fields by selecting the entire report and pressing F9 on the keyboard. You may want to do that twice to ensure all the tables are updated properly. This tutorial gave you a high level overview of Unitank. Please see our other videos for tutorials that cover specific toppers in greater depth.